we have 17 people, I'm sure many more would join. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for joining the call today. Uh, this uh, call is basically to help all of us, the partners at global level, but also those calling from various locations and the colleagues from the three country offices uh, to give us a brief update following our last um, call on, on, on the, the response in the cyclone Adai, uh, affected countries, uh, where they are and what are the still remaining challenges and how best we could do as global community uh, support them to, to really advance the implementation of the nutrition related response. Uh, so with that in mind, um, we have the three countries, uh, so uh, the presentation would basically go through some of the current, uh, the update in terms of the situation, the, the focus of the response, and then um, what has so far been achieved, but what are the remaining challenges, and uh, as usual, what are some of the key asks uh, colleagues from those three countries would like to highlight for us as, as collective uh, global partners. So with that in mind, um, we have, uh, I think it will be Abigail, uh, who is acting as the national cluster coordinator for Mozambique. Uh, she would make the first presentation. Uh, it's already loaded, so I don't know whether you can see. Um, I think both Abigail and also uh, Wilfred, uh, uh, has a more detailed uh, presentation, which we thought uh, could maybe be shared later with a lot of details. But uh, since this uh, um, the call is normally, it just lasts for one hour, at most one and a half, we decided uh, to advise them to cut the presentation really fast for, for this call. But uh, when we are sharing the the notes, we would also be in position to share with you uh, the, the, the more detailed presentation that they had shared with us. Yeah. Uh, so with that, we now have about 21 participants, but I'm sure uh, there are people who have logged in and there are one or two people around the table attending. So I'm sure we have much more uh, people uh, attending the call. So with that, Abby, can I hand over to you? Sure, Jocelyn. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, thank you very much. Um, as Josephine has said, my name is Abigail, normally the cluster coordinator for Bangladesh, but in Mozambique to provide such support for coordination at national level. So um, I would start with the first slide. Should I take over as the presenter or? Okay, great, thanks. Mm. Um, so the situation update on Cyclone Idai. Um, so currently we have um, over 700 people that have been relocated from Beira to a location known as Guara. There are um, conversations that are going on at both national level and Beira uh, level with regards to relocation and, uh, and resettlement of uh, people hosted in accommodation centers. But just to highlight that there's been some serious concerns from uh, the humanitarian community on um, some protection concerns that have been raised, uh, including availability of services where they are going to be resettled and uh, voluntary relocation and resettlement. So that is also being handled by protection cluster and um, the government also is well aware of that. Uh, we still have, uh, we are seeing a decrease in terms of the number of people that are living in the accommodation centers, and this is a result of the uh, ongoing relocations and resettlement. Um, previously, in the last call, we did ex express concern about malaria cases in Sofala, and Amatanda, Dondo, and Beira, and this continues to rise, so malaria is uh, actually one of the um, diseases that WHO is really tackling with. For cholera, there is a um, recognized decrease, and as of uh, two days ago, WHO mentioned that the cholera cases are now manageable. 
Um, in terms of the number of people that are actually in places that are hard to reach, we have around 180,000, 177,000, and they are hosted in more than uh, 50 communities in Buzi, Chibababa, Namachanda, and Susendanga districts. So that, this just also um, highlights the need that we still have people that are in need but are located in areas that are really difficult to reach, and we have to have to think about modified approaches as well as innovative approaches to be able to make sure that they are continuing to access life-saving services. Next slide, please. Um, so we have a humanitarian response plan, and this humanitarian response plan uh, was for 2018-2019 and has been updated um, with the coming of uh, Cyclone Idai. And as you can see, we, the, the current, the need was $337.2 million. Uh, people in need is $258 million, 2.58 million. People targeted is 2.4 million. Um, and the map there, which you will see clearly, shows the location of um, where the cyclone Idai hits and where we are currently concentrating on providing the humanitarian assistance. Next slide. Uh, in terms of a nutrition-specific response, uh, 1.85 million are the people in need. The targeted people is 428,000 people, which include 328 children under five and 100,000 pregnant and lactating women. Our funding requirement was 9.7, and we have only received 9.3 as per the reporting FTS. Only 500,000 has been received so far, and this is through the SAF allocation that was given to WFP and UNICEF. Uh, in terms of partners, we have uh, the key UN agencies in nutrition, UNICEF, uh, World Health Organization, WFP, and FAO that are very active in the cluster. Uh, we also have MISAU, of course, who are working with UNICEF to lead coordination of the overall response. Uh, um, we have World Vision, we have Save the Children that are majorly looking at the infant and young child feeding. And we have three um, active donors, which is uh, DFID, USID, and World Bank. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of the strategic nutrition priorities for Cyclonidae, I would just like to mention that we now have um, finalized the nutrition cluster response plan. And the nutrition cluster response plan was made based on the overall Ministry of Health, Health and Nutrition plan. So it's aligned to that. And within that, we have been able to extract um, the strategic priorities for the emergency response. And three areas have been identified collectively with MISAU and other partners. And this um, is the life-saving services, the, the curative services for treatment of um, severe and moderate acute malnutrition. Our target group is still children under five, pregnant and lactating women, but because we know we have had, we have high prevalence of HIV, tuberculosis, as well as cholera as a result of, uh, of flooding, we are also targeting uh, other vulnerable groups. Um, the second objective is around the preventive component which includes the maternal nutrition, uh, infant and young child feeding, uh, uh, infant and young child feeding practices programs, as well as uh, micronutrient supplementation, uh, majorly vitamin A and um, IFA supplementation in the high risk groups. So this continues to be a strategic focus for the response as we move forward. And the last strategic priority is around the coordination, which has been a challenge and UNICEF has greatly supported uh, Ministry of Health to strengthen collective uh, coordination. Monitoring and surveillance, we are working with other ministries as well, outside Ministry of Health, which is also, we have um, SEPSAN, which is an agency, government body that deals with coordination of food security and assessment. Uh, also working very closely with WHO on the early warning reporting system where we have incorporated nutrition indicators in 41 facilities um, and planning to scale, up, to scale that up. 
and utilization of the early warning system, early warning information that is coming from FuseNet, that is coming from various other channels to really inform um, the response and to help in decision making. Next slide. So in terms of where we are, um, that is progress versus target, I would just want to mention one thing um, that in the beginning of the response when we were coming up with the targets, this was really based on the scanty information that we had at that time. Um, so there was a little bit of, um, I mean currently we are actually revising the targets because we have been able to have um, really concrete information in terms of populations and where these populations are. Um, but as you can see, we are not, we have not done so well in terms of achievement versus targets. Um, for screening, it's 15,000 versus the 328,000. 128 children have been treated for mom versus the target of 53,000. 42 children for some versus the target of over 8,000. 49 pregnant and lactating women versus the target of 44,000. And then 33,500 pregnant and lactating women and caretakers with regards to them receiving IYCF services over the target of 100,000. Now, one of the things that we have uh, reported is of course very low admissions. Um, and we are still struggling to see whether it's the lack of activity or the reporting. Of course, we are really struggling with um, late reporting, incomplete reports, um, and as well, really clarifying the reporting channels. In Mozambique, uh, the Ministry of Health is virtually the only implementer when it comes to implementation of nutrition services, and uh, the partners are providing technical support. Um, so we are also trying to work with the ministry to see how we can strengthen um, the data collection as well as reporting and to see how other partners can also um, channel that information so that we can get um, uh, really data that tells us exactly where we are in terms of the targets versus achievement. So we've been able to support um, development of co uh, data collection forms that captures the key indicators and end of this week, we will be in a, a, a very good space to know where we are. So we are expecting that in the next call, we will have some, um, we will be very confident with uh, the, the numbers that are coming in and being able to really know if it's the activities that need further scale up or whether these challenges around reporting are the ones that have led to a very low numbers. Next slide. Um, as we all know, we have the Cyclone Kenneth that hit uh, around 25th of April, and this is now the second cyclone that has hit Mozambique in a period of six weeks. Uh, as of yesterday, we have received a formal report from the government indicating that 41 people have died in Mozambique. Um, and as a result of that, we have received 10 million that have been allocated from the Central Emergency Response Fund, the SAF for Mozambique. Um, we are still struggling with allocation of staff for nutrition services, uh, nutrition response. We have possible allocation of 500,000, 500, but this is still not confirmed. We are doing a lot of advocacy with, um, with the OCHA on this. Uh, so we should be in a position to know tomorrow or after tomorrow where, whether this will go through or not. Regardless of that, we are still preparing, um, you know, the, the activity plan, the budget as requested, and hope that this will come through. Uh, one thing also not to forget is the cyclone was just the first step. We still have rainfall that is going on, um, and ex the rainfall, I mean, the heavy rains are expected to last until end of this week or next week. And with that, we have also very serious access constraints and as well, um, there's increasing needs in terms of the number of people that are requiring humanitarian assistance. The access is really limiting um, aid operations because uh, roads are becoming impossible, the flights are being you know, canceled. So it's really depending on the agencies that are already on ground to provide uh, the life-saving services. Um, 
There are also security concerns in some areas, um, and so this is this, there are also implications in terms of how we support, we provide humanitarian support with government advising really very low key response and very low visibility um, for Cyclone Kenneth response. Next slide. Yes, um, a question has been asked about flooding. Yes, um, we are expecting that, um, and, and uh, Dorothy has been able to, ask, uh, to answer that, so yes. Yeah, so just to mention that we have also Dorothy on call, who is the nutrition manager in, uh, in Mozambique, and she will also be able to provide um, feedback and some responses to your questions as we go on. Okay, in terms of the updates, uh, on Cyclonidae. As I mentioned before, we now have um, March to June, a response strategy that has been developed and it's adopted. The strategy has uh, the strategic objectives as we have, I outlined in the beginning of the presentation. And it also has incorporated other cross-cutting themes like um, prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse, accountability to affected population, disability, um, and, and, and protection concerns as well. It also has a monitoring and evaluation framework that really helps us to know um, the people in need per um, activity, per intervention, as well as um, the targets and assumptions around that. Uh, we have developed the cluster bulletin, the first issue of the bulletin uh, that um, sheds light on what we have been able to do since the beginning of the response, and this has been issued. So after the call, um, I'm sure this will be circulated to all of us and you can be able to see uh, what the, the collective response has been able to achieve so far. Uh, we've also managed to work on the cluster website because um, we have a lot of documents, we have a lot of information and we needed um, to have a, a platform where you know new partners coming in or if you want any reference materials, you can be able to quickly access them. So this is up and running. And in the bulletin, you'll be able to see uh, where the website, I mean, the, the link to the website and the accessing the various documents. Uh, we also had an issue in terms of visibility for nutrition cluster. And this was because um, at subnational level, we have a combined health and nutrition cluster that is chaired by w, uh, WHO and um, MISAU. With a, with a task force that looks at nutrition and other things. So in terms of the way the, the 4W tool, which is a tool that tells us what, who is doing what where, it was really uh, uh, hidden under health and some of the nutrition activities were really not coming out um, as nutrition specific. And this was really having an impact in terms of our operational presence for the response. So this has been sorted out and you will also see that in the bulletin. Uh, we've also managed to do, uh, to standardize the data collection tools, as I said before. So we are expecting the first set of data first week of, of May. And this is something that is now owned and approved by MISAU. So it's scaled up and can be used in any other emergency, including now Cyclone Kenneth. Um, and then we have been able to work with the WHO to increase include nutrition indicators, which is, you know, number of people screened and number of, um, number of children screened, number of identified some, number of identified mom uh, in the early warning and response system. And this currently is being done in 41 facilities. We expect that it will be scaled up to around 80 facilities. So this also strengthens the nutrition surveillance uh, and provides us information on where, which are the hotspots that we also need to, to concentrate on in, in terms of ensuring um, integrated service delivery. The SMART survey is ongoing. Uh, we've already, we, re, it's completed in, in Cyclone Kenneth. We have some preliminary data, but this has to be approved by SETSAN, which as I said, is the government body coordinating food security and nutrition. So this should be able to inform our next response strategy, which um, is beginning in July, but we have to start developing it in June based on the data and the information that we have. So it's really very really timely. And it's covering 17 districts, including um, the emergency affected districts. And soon after that, we will also be having IPC, 
for acute malnutrition that will begin in the first week of, of, of June. So this will also provide us with information that will feed into the next uh, response strategy. Um, as we all know, we will be having an operational peer review for the collective response, the system-wide um, cluster activation that will begin mid of May. And this is looking at both the coordination and the programmatic aspect. Um, it's being uh, done by OCHA, uh, and we expect from this we will have recommendations on how long this system-wide activation will last, and then what will look like, what the other phase will look like and including how the overall coordination structures will look like. Um, and so we are providing information that is feeding into this exercise. Uh, we also have what we call a post-disaster uh, needs assessment that is ongoing, PD PDNA. And this is a post-reconstruction uh, strategy uh, with a five-year timeline that is done by the government. Um, and it follows uh, of course, the PDNA approach that has um, five assessment steps that include in context analysis. We have the disaster effects, the disaster impact, the recovery needs, as well as the recovery strategy. Um, this is done across all sectors, um, looking at the existing human and economic activity. And this is expected to be presented in a donors conference on May 29th. So it's actually um, a fundraising tool as well, reflecting the, 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 uh, the, the losses and the needs for each sector. And we, we, Nutrition Cluster has worked closely with Ministry of Health to make sure that uh, nutrition has uh, really been reflected because it has a direct impact on what happens next, including our next response strategy. Um, there was a health facility assessment that was done, a rapid assessment that was done uh, with MISAO and partners, and the recommendations that came out of, of the assessment in the affected areas clearly calls for the need for us to strengthen the technical capacities on management of acute malnutrition as well as infant and young child feeding practices. So there are still capacity gaps. Uh, and already efforts from partners are ongoing to support the government to, to be able to um, address that. As well, we have um, issues with, in terms of availability of nutrition supplies and equipment. Uh, but this is not just about um, a pipeline break. It's really about make, uh, strengthening the supply chain management to make sure that the supplies that are existing at provincial level are also um, made available at the health facility level to prevent any stockouts um, that we know have a direct impact on the response. Next slide, please. Cyclone Kenneth response. Um, so MISAO, as I said um, before, they are the implementers when it comes to nutrition response uh, with partners supporting, and they have indicated that there are uh, nutrition supplies in the affected areas that were meant for routine, the routine program, but then they will definitely be depleted. And because of that, UNICEF and WFP has already started working to mobilize res uh, resources in terms of making sure that supplies are there to ensure no pipeline break. There's a partner presence that has been done by OCHA, so we know which partner is working there. And for nutrition cluster, we have now started working on the four Ws um, um, in terms of to know who is doing what for nutrition, to be able to um, have information on what, um, how we need to coordinate the response. UNICEF will be sending a staff um, at the end of the week um, to establish and strengthen the coordination needs and as well to um, start support on the IOSCFE response. Um, WFP is working on both uh, food security and nutrition and they have been able to send um, staff and they have also sent some high energy biscuits in the affected areas. Um, MISAO staff uh, are being deployed end of the week, additional staff but the ones that are currently in the affected areas have um, scaled up active case finding, referral and treatment to make sure that all um, the prevalent cases are actually having access to treatment. Um, there are serious funding gaps for uh, Cyclone Kenneth. Um, as I said before, we are still 
struggling with funding gaps for Cyclone Idai. So this means that, you know, even with the meager resources that we have, we have to see how um, we can support Cyclone Kenneth. And this is one of the advocacy uh, areas I will also share at the end of the slide. And amidst all this, um, the government has really advised that the response need to be low profile because of the security concerns and the lessons learned last year where, you know, we even had some journalists that uh, were arrested because of um, a lot of, you know, issues that led to visibility uh, at the, and, and a lot of other areas that the government would really like to ensure it doesn't happen. And for now, the, the advice from the government is really to work with the partners that are there to avoid another um, Beira situation, to put it in government's uh, own word, and to, to, to really see how the partners that are having presence in uh, affected areas can be supported to scale up the response. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, Abby, no, not to rush you, but for the remaining slides, if you could aim to finish within uh, 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 five minutes maximum, will that be possible? Yeah, okay, thank you, yeah. Um, so this, this is a funding uh, status for Cyclone Idai, and this uh, is only for the partners that have reported. So we're still running a funding gap of $5.314 uh, million. Next slide, please. Um, the supply pipeline, overall we are doing good in all the supplies, except for uh, CSB+. Plus. And WFP has already um, expressed concern, and this is also an area where we should be able to um, advocate for more funding. And this is only for Cyclone Idai, for Cyclone Kenneth, um, we need to mobilize resources for supplies. Next slide. Uh, the key challenges and bottlenecks, the first one, as I said, is the funding gap. That is really um, a big impediment for scale-up. There is very weak active case finding and beneficiary follow-up that we are trying to address through the health week that is currently ongoing. Now is the only implementer for nutrition, so that means that you know it's um, we have to support other partners because of funding issues are not able. All, most projects are really in planning in planning phase. There are data reporting issues, data data quality issues that we are working on. The IYCF response is really slow and it's both because of technical and operational constraint and we have issues in getting right people because of of course fluency in speaking Portuguese and Spanish and this is across all sectors. Next slide. So in terms of key asks to GNC partners which is also a consultative um, uh, area a partner nutrition cluster training, coordination training in uh, Mozambique would be useful uh, for, of course, increasing awareness around uh, what cluster does and accountability of partners. Supporting strengthening nutrition cluster information management for the collective response would be appreciated. And as well, funding advocacy for both uh, Idai and Kenneth, considering we are only 5% funded. Um, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thanks so much, Abby. That is really so clear and uh, quite uh, elaborate. Uh, we uh, all appreciate that. Uh, now, uh, are there comments or clarification on the line before we go to the next country? Uh, I'm sure our colleagues online have a few follow-up questions, but if you, you want to just put out one or two questions for clarification that will be appreciated. Then we move to uh, which? Yeah, after that, we move to Zimbabwe. And as uh, Angelina uploads the Zimbabwe presentation, uh, we, we would be happy to take one or two questions. Hi, hi, Josephine. Can I jump in? It's Gronia. How are you? Hi, Gronia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi uh, 
Gail, great, great presentation. Well done. Just a quick thing, and it goes to your last point. It's really quite concerning and kind of shocking how underfunded this response is. And I'm just wondering, you know, given the objectives that you highlighted in terms of the key objectives of the response, which of the objectives are the most underfunded? Probably all. But if you were to put an appeal out right now, which are the key um, parts of the program that are the most underfunded that you're most concerned about so that we could help in advocacy? Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I mean, if maybe somebody online, let's take another one, then you can quickly respond. Uh, any, anybody else? Okay. Abby, uh, silence means... Uh, oh, sorry. Jo oh. Josephine, yeah, yeah, Nicolas speaking. I just have a very, oh, uh, very oh. quick question. Yes, then Nicolas from WFP. I mean, and that could maybe also support our advocacy effort. Uh, what's the nutrition situation now in Mozambique? Do we have any update information on the on the nutritional needs? Thank you. Okay, th thanks so much, Nico. Uh, Abby, if you could quickly respond to those two as we put up uh, uh, the um, Zimbabwe presentation, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, sure. Thank you very much for the question. Um, questions. In response to the first questions, we have two areas that are heavily underfunded, and that is, I would say, um, treatment for acute malnutrition, the PRN program, um, both technical support and supplies, and the second area is on infant and young child feeding uh, practices or programs where basically nothing is happening uh, apart from, you know, counseling that is being done by um, a few partners. So those are the two areas that we, we are really underfunded and would appreciate advocacy those line, on those lines. In terms of assessments, we have, as I said, CESPAN that is supporting that. Um, yeah, but in terms of those two strategic areas, um, including supplies, are really the areas that we are underfunded. Um, on the nutrition situation in Mozambique, um, as I said in the beginning, we, we now have a smart survey that is ongoing. Uh, we have preliminary, which is, um, has not been disseminated, um, so it's not officially and shouldn't be quoted anywhere else. But in one of the areas, we've seen a gum prevalence of 11.3. Uh, so that's, that's uh, quite high, considering the aggravating factors, um, including malaria, including, you know, possibility of having cholera because it's a flood uh, area and all that. But in, um, in the areas, in areas where we are having the response in um, the Cyclonidae affected areas, the data that we have, I would say, I have already said that we have um, some concerns, but the gum prevalence lies between 5 to 11 percent from the programmatic data, uh, but I would be in, in, in um, better situation by the end of, of the week when we have the first set of data coming in. In, in one week's time, we should, be able to, we should be able to have the smart survey that would really confidently tell us where we are in terms of the nutrition situation. Okay. Yes, Abby. Sorry. Josephine, may I just con uh, compliment what Abby has, has answered? Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in terms of the funding gaps, I think I agree with Abby that the two main areas are this, the, um, the screening and treatment for acute malnutrition and also IYCF and emergencies. Although the country has a, a national CMAM program in place, um, we are, you know, it's it's not a very well-functioning program, and so supplies and training are, are very much needed um, to identify cases and get them um, to treatment, quality treatment quickly. Um, the IYCFE is, is another area, um, but we have uh, recently submitted um, a final draft, we hope, of a joint proposal between WFP and UNICEF to DFID um, to fund both of these areas. So um, the, the timeline for that proposal, if it's hopefully which will be approved soon, would carry us through uh, December 2020. So we are hopeful that that's going to be available very soon to get moving on both of these fronts. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much, Dorothy. Uh, Abby, there's additional comment just quickly from uh, uh, Megan. 
regarding the, the additional technical support you reported UNICEF is deploying for IYCFE, what that is, if you could quickly answer that, then uh, we'll give the floor to Simon to make the presentation for um, Zimbabwe. Okay, I'm sure and Dorothy can add more to that. So um, UNICEF has been able to uh, provide the, um, I, I mean, there's a nutrition officer on IYCF to support uh, IYCFE response, um, but as well, uh, we have um, also um, a surge support in um, in, uh, in Beira that is supporting both PRN, both CMAM, I would say, because that's a generic term that is known, and IYCF. So there is one uh, passport that is supporting uh, both the CMAM and IYCF, as well as additional programmatic staff as provider of last resort to make sure that um, the IYCF support is, is, is being provided. Okay. Dorothy, do you want to add something or we go to uh, Zimbabwe for now? No, I think I, I think Abby's correct. I can just quickly add that um, our national officer who focuses on IYCFE is, has been supportive and we are trying to just maximize what's already in place with the government um, materials and, and again, this is an area in the DFID proposal that we hope to have resources soon, but um, we are anticipating a visit of um, uh, our headquarters in mid-May, uh, Diane Holland and I believe Mara from regional office are planning to come as well. So um, I think that's a point that we want to discuss with them, how we can, um, you know, increase our technical sort of uh, presence in this area for, you know, as soon as possible, but also for a, a longer term engagement for the, for the, not the response and recovery periods. Yeah. Uh, uh Quickly, what uh, maybe I would like to add around the IYCFE capacity is that uh, uh, the few global partners, uh, agencies like uh, SAVE, and also through the, 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 the technical, the search mechanism, the tech RRT mechanism, I, I think the countries should not hesitate to, 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 to shout out for additional support partly because, uh, as uh, Abby explained, the response is delivered through government. So any partner support will really be in support of government. And, and these uh, other partners could do, could do the same to supplement and complement uh, what uh, uh, UNICEF as a lead agency is putting on the table, as well as the, what the regional office is, 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 is bringing on, on or, you know, for, for the country. So, all I would say is that, uh, you know, make sure you utilize what is available from the collective response. Not, don't just depend on the UNICEF capacity because this is an extraordinary uh, emergency and it's a health threat situation in any case. Uh, with that, uh, I would do the few other questions, but we'll take them later. Let's move to uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, Simon, would you like to kick off? Uh, thank you, Justin. Uh, my name is Simon Karanja. I'm a, a nutrition cluster coordinator based with the Rapid Response Team. Currently in Zimbabwe, supporting the cluster both at the national and the provincial level, uh, but based in the, in the main hub in Mutare. Okay, so, next slide. So the current situation in Zimbabwe, as you see, is that uh, currently the health infrastructure system is functioning. All health facilities are open and providing services. There is still no, the currently no report of any disease outbreak. Uh, WHO and UNICEF just completed the cholera vaccine and they had very good coverage. And uh, they have not, uh, they have not, uh, there's no report of any cholera for the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, the number of, ID, of people in the IDP camps have reduced. Actually, quite a number of them have now closed down, uh, and, and people have gone back to their farms and to their houses. Uh, all affected areas are now accessible by road. There were a few areas that previously were not, but now all the health facilities and all, and, and all the wards are accessible by road. Uh, in terms of the nutrition situation, we expect the, the situation to deteriorate, to deteriorate in the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, currently is the harvest time, and uh, the cyclone destroyed a lot of the expected harvest. In addition to that, also the in areas where that, that was not affected by the cyclone, 
the harvest is expected to be poor because of the of the ongoing drought uh, in this uh, in this region. So we expect the situation to worsen as the, as, as the months go. Next slide. In terms of the nutrition cluster, we have uh, finalized our, our response. Uh, the nutrition response is also here uh, aligned with the health, uh, health sector response. And uh, currently we are focusing on the two most affected districts, that is the Chima, Chimanimani and Chipinge. These were the ones that were most hit by the cyclone. And uh, we have uh, re-updated our, our figures. We have uh, approximately 78,000 people in need. And then uh, our sum, we are targeting 2,000, and this is for the, for the whole year. And MAM, 4,000. And these rates are based on the just completed the National SMART. So we have used uh, the, the average also to compute our targets. And also we have a clear target for the RICF. So this target is actually based, they actually up for the whole year. Uh, but we, we will monitor the situation to see whether, uh, as, as I will present later, it can be expanded to other, to more districts. Next slide. Uh, currently, our uh, the dashboard, as you can see, is uh, our key activities are in terms of uh, there is a treatment of SAM, MAM, and RICFE and vitamin A supplementation. In terms of uh, uh, some treatment, so far we have uh, 91 uh, admission, which uh, which uh, I think it is uh, it's it's, it's uh, we have done a lot of screening, so we we have 91, but we're expecting this to increase in the coming weeks, as also as we improved our reporting and the, and the screening uh, is, uh, is done in more areas. We also have around 156 admitted, uh, admitted in, the, in the OTP. We are using the expanded criteria to include both the SAM and the MAM, and we're using RETF to, to treat this. But this, is, this, this uh, policy will be reviewed in the coming uh, a month or two, depending on the, the coverage of other programs. Uh, in terms of our CFE, we are doing very well. Uh, we are currently about 50% based on our targets. And also in vitamin A, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are on track and we are planning this figure to increase in the coming days as our activities are integrated within the, the planned campaigns. We have, uh, across, we have eight partners who are involved in, in, among all, in all these activities, as we'll see later. Uh, the biggest gap here is the funding gap. So far, based on the flash appeal, there's a funding gap of uh, 92%. Uh, a total of uh, $1 million have been received across all the partners, and most of this money came from SAF. Many of the partners are using their internal funds to, to support the, the scale-up. Next, next slide. So in terms of our nutrition priorities uh, and strategies, is one of the strategies is to scale up screening, uh, active screening, and we are targeting in, term, in food distribution, immunization campaigns. The plan is to have each and every single uh, child in the affected area screened. So we are working very hard to ensure screening is integrated in all community activities. And, uh, and, and, and of course, we, have, we are working very closely with the, food, with the food sector to ensure that uh, screening is uh, is mainstreamed in all their food distribution and uh, non-food non item distribution. Of course, uh, we are working very closely with the, immunization, with the health sector to, to, to fully integrate uh, screening in the immunization campaigns. Uh, the other priority is to strengthen the imam support, supervision, and monitoring. We, the target is to ensure that we're able to, to move into all the health facilities and uh, support the health workers there. Quite a number of them have not been trained in, uh, in uh, management of some. So it's something that we are giving it a priority. The other priority is the uh, data reporting. We have been having a challenge in terms of getting accurate data and timely data from the field. But uh, recently we have been, uh, we have, uh, this week we have piloted on, uh, on the rapid pro SMS system. And uh, we are going to scale it up fully next week uh, and we're expecting to get good data from uh, timely data from the from the field 
the the issue here is that there's already an, an existing system and we don't want to interfere with it the plan is to have a, a system that we can get weekly data for the emergency without uh, affecting the regular dhis data so the plan is to rely on the on the rapid pro sms the pilot phase went very well so we are hoping in the coming weeks we'll get very good quality data we we, we are focusing also on the icfe especially on uh, BMS and OSF counseling. We'll see later that the issue of BMS is quite uh, is an issue quite in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, there's a lot of distribution ongoing, so it's something that uh, we, are, we are pushing, working closely with the government uh, agencies that are in charge of distribution to, to address the issue. Uh, in terms of our CFE, we have uh, the partners on ground really supporting on this, on this, uh, on this particular item. Uh, we're also planning to do capacity building for targeting the health workers in nutrition emergencies. Quite a number of them, as I said earlier, have not been trained in uh, nutrition emergencies. So there's something we have uh, we have already started and uh, it's going to continue. And of course, we plan to strengthen the coordination at the province and the district levels. We, As we'll see later, we have already activated the cluster approach system. Uh, and uh, so we need to strengthen those and uh, of course we also need to work more so at the national level. We're also monitoring other disaster that has uh, uh, drought affected. We are looking at 10 more districts mostly that are drought affected and we're monitoring the situation and uh, the plan maybe is to also to expand or scale up the response to cover some of those uh, that, are, that are mostly affected in terms of, of drought. So those those are our priorities, and uh, a lot of them are already ongoing. Next slide. Uh, as, as I said, our key activity is, uh, is uh, nutrition screening, and we have all the partners uh, supporting, Goal, Adra, Save the Children, and uh, the Nutrition Association of, of, uh, of Zimbabwe. In terms of some, we, it's, uh, currently is, uh, is UNICEF supporting the, the MOH, the Provincial Medical Directorate. Uh, through the health facilities to implement the, the sum mom treatment. And I've said earlier, we are using, uh, we are currently implementing the expanded criteria, but based on, uh, we review the coverage of, of, of the BSFP and the targeted and the TSFP that will be coming, then we might review this policy in the coming, uh, in the coming weeks. But currently, I think we are looking for, to continue for a month or so. Uh, we have WFP supporting uh, Agra, Adra and Goal in, in, uh, in the BSFP, targeting under five, but uh, in selected wards, uh, the coverage is not very good, but uh, we are working closely with WFP to ensure that the, the coverage is, uh, it's, uh, is increased to cover all the, the wards. We also have uh, in selected wards, uh, BSFP targeting and TSFP targeting pregnant and lactating women. Uh, so, but this uh, this is patchy. So the plan is to to scale up. Uh, the CSB included in the food assistant, which is uh, of great help, we are, and they are targeting uh, households with children under five or pregnant or lactating women. We have uh, micronutrient supplementation, both vitamin A and NMPs. MNPs. Uh, uh, the strategy we are using is the the village health workers to distribute. Uh, and vitamin A, we are looking to inter fully integrate with the uh, upcoming immunization campaigns. There's a lot of activities ongoing in terms of our ICFE, some uh, partners, uh, we have care groups, UNICEF is supporting uh, roadshows, and, uh, and uh, Save the Children has come in strong in uh, BMS monitoring. Of course, uh, with UNICEF uh, uh, across all those, uh, supporting all those uh, as, uh, organizations. Next slide. Yeah, in terms of uh, coordination structure, as you can see, we have, a, uh, we have uh, at three levels, the national, where, which is chaired by the MOH, co-chaired by, by UNICEF. At the moment, uh, it's, uh, it's chaired by the, it's co-chaired by the UNICEF manager. Uh, and uh, I'm also, in terms of information management, I am, I am playing, working, playing that role that in terms of information management. Uh, but also, I will also once in a while travel to Zimbabwe to support in terms of, uh, of coordination at the, level, at the national level. At the provincial level, we also have uh, a good uh, coordination activities going on, which are chaired by the provincial nutritionists, supported by UNICEF, 
Uh, and uh, in terms of information management, we are currently capacity building one of the provincial team to be able to take this role uh, in terms of data management. We also have uh, at the district level, headed by, chaired by the district nutritionist, uh, and we are proposing a goal to co-chair also in, in a way to support the district nutritionist to coordinate activities at the district level. Uh, in all the three levels, there are weekly meetings, uh, and uh, they also, and also the three levels, they're collecting 4W, updating, uh, we are updating the humanitarian website, they're all uh, updated uh, and uh, encouraging the, the partners to fill in the FTS. Uh, in terms of information management, as I said earlier, we plan to rely on the Rapid Pro. We, from the piloting, we, we can see it can be sustainable. There's very good uh, coverage in, uh, in the areas affected, and, uh, and the response from the health workers has been very positive. Uh, as I mentioned, in terms of IM, the workload is quite currently quite light, uh, just focusing on two districts. But maybe the situation may change once if, the, if, the, if, we, if we scale up to the other drought-affected district. Next slide. Uh, in Zimbabwe, there is an excellent opportunity to scale up. As I have said earlier, there is access to, uh, to all affected areas. Uh, most of the health facilities have uh, adequate health workers. Uh, and uh, very many, I would say, very good coverage with the village health workers. Uh, there is a nutrition-specific staff at the district level, starting with the district uh, nutritionist and ward nutrition coordinators. So it's a good uh, opportunity to, to, to scale up, to use the, the, this particular structure to, to implement quality interventions. Uh, in terms of health facility, it's quite good coverage. In those two districts, we are talking of about around 77 health facilities. So it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good opportunity. Uh, there are quite a number of planned immunization campaigns. Uh, for the next two months, three months, we are talking of around five campaigns. So it's a good uh, opportunity, and we are thinking to make sure that we fully integrate screening and we'll be able to, to maximize uh, our, activity, our efforts. Next slide. In terms of gaps, uh, the main one is the financial resources. As you can see, uh, we have uh, only 8% cluster funding. The, the thing we need to mention is that we are still compl uh, compiling the commitment needs from the nutrition partners. We still don't have a clear picture of exactly the, 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 our partners, their, their financial requirements, but that's uh, ongoing. Uh, in terms of UNICEF, uh, as you can see, they need its uh, requirements to, to replenish the stock. A lot of the stock were moved from the different parts of the country and brought to the, to the, to, to the, to the main hub. Uh, but the, so there's a requirement to replenish the existing emergency stock and also to ensure that other nutrition, other nutrition programs in other districts are ongoing. In terms of human capacity currently, we ha is it adequate? Uh, with the level of uh, disaster, the UNICEF on ground and the health workers on ground, it's adequate, but there's a need to, to, to build the capacity in terms of nutrition emergencies and maybe coordination. Next slide. Uh, uh, one, of the main, uh, one of our main challenges is the distribution of DMS and other, and other baby food donations. Most of them are expired. Uh, the sources of this is mostly faith-related uh, organization, but quite a bit of it is coming through the government uh, government uh, channels, and uh, we're only getting to know them when they arrive at the district level. And uh, it's uh, for the last uh, since for the last two weeks or so, we have approximately stopped the distribution of 20 metric tons. So you are talking of huge, huge. Uh, uh, supplies and uh, they vary from infant formula, starter formula, and then we have uh, uh, baby foods, and most of them are in, uh, are in uh, the poor labeling, they're not labeling in English, um, it's in Russian. And uh, the, the partners on the ground are working hard to ensure that uh, these supplies are not distributed, especially the, the, the BMS. Uh, so it's it's something that you are. The other thing is, that, and we are looking forward to, is uh, I'm saying in terms of the DMS, it's uh, it's as I said, it's huge quantities coming in. They're coming through the government channels, so we are working very closely 
with the government channels to ensure that uh, they're not distributed. Uh, we have, uh, as a cluster, distributed the joint statement on BMS, but there's need to to do more on, uh, on especially at the at the port of entry where these supplies are coming from. Next slide. Uh, currently, another challenge is the poor coverage of, uh, of uh, the targeted uh, supplementary feeding, both for under five and pregnant lactation women, as uh, this necessitated the, the approach of the expanded criteria. And we are hoping that uh, WFP will, will scale up its, uh, its uh, the response in this particular area. Of course, in terms of uh, capacity, we have uh, a lot of the health workers have not been trained. And, and this is affecting the, the quality, especially as the, the treatment of, of some. Next. So our key ask is, uh, is uh, resource mobilization, and I uh, said holistically to, to include the cyclone die affected districts and, uh, and drought. And also it's a good opportunity to ensure that uh, we start our early recovery activities uh, soonest. Uh, we need uh, maybe more partners to support the MOH to monitor to monitor the response support in terms of uh, support supervision and in terms of quality. And also, we really need assistance in terms of high-level advocacy on uh, on the BMS. I think the challenge at the district provincial level, especially on the issue of BMS, it's 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 addressed. The issue is now is to be able to. To be able, if we, if this, be, if the supplies can be identified at the port of entry, and therefore this uh, reduces the risk of the same supplies going to districts, for example, that uh, that UNICEF is not monitoring. So uh, we are in constant uh, this, uh, discussion with UNICEF to be able to to see how this can be done to ensure that the message, the joint, the joint statement reaches to the very highest level uh, in government. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simon. That's so clear. Um, before we move to, I don't know whether. Oh, okay. Uh, we have an announcement. We have been having difficulties with Malawi being on and off air, and they have dropped off again. So we are really not sure whether we will be able to get them. And but if we don't, then. Uh, what we'll do is share that uh, presentation with all of you because they did work on their own presentation as well. Uh, with that, uh, maybe I open up uh, to questions uh, first to Simon uh, from uh, uh, Zimbabwe. And then after that, we could have an overall discussion again on uh, other related you know, uh, issues that came from the Mozambique presentation. And then we can wrap up. So over to you, colleagues online. Uh, Andy, do you want to say what you said? You're typing. <clears throat> sure, I can. Yeah. Um, Simon, you mentioned about the quality of SAM treatment being an issue. Um, do you have plans on how to handle that? Mom, I think. No, no SAM. SAM, SAM. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes. We. We have actually started uh, some uh, some training, but not in-depth training to look at the, the basic, for example, the admission criteria, the the discharge criteria. So so the training is ongoing, but there's really need to go into the in-depth uh, training. So we have just uh, actually the training is ongoing, but is only looking at the very basic in terms of uh, some uh, some treatment. So the, the the issue here is actually in terms of resources. Uh, uh, UNICEF does not have, uh, and the Ministry of Health, uh, the resources to, so that uh, we can implement uh, a, a comprehensive training. Okay. Don't yeah. have the resources in terms of finances, or yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of finances to pay the DSA, the conference halls, and all that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not more of a, a technical capacity because if it is, then this is something that the tech RRT or through the regional office, maybe they might have 
some suggestions on that, uh, but uh, being 8% funded, I, I could clearly see the difficulties around uh, uh, having the, the, the funding for workshops and stuff like that, because you need to pull people together in, in, in a central place, or there could also be decentralized training needs. But uh, um, I don't know whether anybody, uh, do you have uh, the colleague uh, from um, uh, Toko with you, or is there anybody from the uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm alone. I'm, uh, there's no oh. unicef. Uh, the question from Hati: oh. the exclusive breastfeeding is 60 percent. Oh. This is the, this is from the, from the smart survey done in uh, this year. Oh. So, and that's why we are worried that the, the, the distribution of BMS will, will may undermine uh, the, the, what, what is relatively quite good uh, coverage uh, oh. uh, prevalence. Okay. Uh, any other question online? Uh. Yeah. If there's anybody talking, you might be on mute. We can't hear. Or is there nothing? Otherwise, the uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. The questions online. Where? Well, yeah, I think most of them have been. Uh, Hati, do you want to, to say what is your question re responded to? Do you want to sound it out quickly? Hati? No, oh, maybe she's gone. Uh, hi, jo hi, Josephine. Sorry, my mic gets stuck off. No, that was fine. I just wanted to know what the prevalence was um, initially, just to see what sort of an impact the, the BMS might be having. But Simon, Simon's answered the question. I think there's a considerable risk there, seeing as 40% of the population were obviously yeah. using it pre-emergency. Yeah. Uh, Megan? Megan? Okay, yeah. Megan is talking of self having deployed a, a global advisor for IYCME to support the, the, the cluster. Megan, that is for Mozambique, right? Not uh, not Zimbabwe, isn't it? Is that Alex? Yeah, that should be Alex, because Alex is here. Okay. All but, right. uh, just a general comment, uh, maybe Megan can also be able to provide us with more information on that, because I've met Alex several times. Uh, um, the, the structure of uh, uh, coordination system in Mozambique is in such a way that we have a national coordination mechanism that looks uh, at strategic issues and provide the overall guidance for the response. Uh, but in the affected areas at provincial level as well, we have, as I said, a health and nutrition class meeting uh, that is chaired by WHO and MISAO. And within that, we have other small task forces that, like malaria, like cholera, and nutrition is one of those task forces. And in that task force, it's chaired by UNICEF and MISAO again. Now, um, Alex is best there at that level, you know, okay. in... Um, in better level, uh, but we have had discussions with him here at national level because, um, I mean, said IYCF generally, as Dorothy mentioned, in Mozambique is a big issue. It, it, I, there's literally nothing happening apart from monitoring the BMS, you know, in terms of real activities uh, on ground. And that has been affected by, number one, funding, as we know, and then uh, number two, technical capacities. Now, with Save the Children, what the discussions with Alex is they have funding issues. So I'm not sure to what extent um, Save the Children can provide support. Is it as an agency overall? Because I understand that um, there are more than, you know, half a million unfunded. Um, and then at national level, what that would look like, because Alex is not here, and we need a lot of support here at national level as well, in terms of um, there are a lot of tools that are being developed at provincial level, and as Dorothy said, we need them here at national level so that they can be scaled up to other areas beyond Cyclone Idai, because now really Cyclone Kenneth is going to be a headache in the next few days, 
uh, because we, we still are struggling with resources. So if Megan can provide a clarification on how the, how, how the support of service children is looking like, is it at provincial level uh, where Alex is based, or will we have also support at national level to support the technical aspect of the, res uh, the response as well as um, you know, the, the lead on IYCF at national level because Misau is again the implementer when it comes to IYCF. Yeah, uh, uh, Megan, would you like to respond to that? And then uh, I also have a comment in the same area and then we, we, we can quickly wrap up. Or oh, should I, uh, Megan? If you are coming in, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Okay. She might have left. A few people left. Anyway, um, I, 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 I really think it's it's a it's a very good point in the in the context of I think all the three countries, uh, given the fact that the. Uh, so the, the implementation of the response is through government. And therefore, maybe we really ask uh, the, the partners at global level who are on the ground, we need to coordinate our input better and also look at uh, what would be the best arrangement to support the government better. And especially in the area of IYCF, in both countries, I didn't hear anything about, you know, whether there is an active IYCF e working group that can help government in, uh, in, you know, having the discussion around the response strategy and putting in place the, the you know, the, what actions need to take place and then organizing ourselves better around areas that will require capacity building and also what needs to be strengthened. I didn't hear that, but all I'm trying to say is that uh, I, I think we have learned from the Ethiopia and other experiences where if it's government leading, then we really have to be a little bit more organized in, uh, and, and be strategic in our support to government so that it's in, in areas where there is a truly a gap. And, and the, the point here is for the, the two of you who are the, the coordinators currently to explore that and then have clarity and, and that should then guide the, the partners who are coming on board to support so that it's clear what their role is. Uh, I, I can understand the need to be like in Beira because that is where government, um, the implementation is taking place. But as you said, we also need to keep a tab on, 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 on the, the strategy and the, the broader picture and how we can support government better. So I, I, I do take that uh, point, but for me, it's Basically, I guess, throwing it back at you guys, what kind of, what role would you want to see uh, uh, partners like, um, you know, SAVE and the others who are coming on board to support IYCFE activities, but others, how should they position themselves? Um, however, overall, what I could clearly see is uh, funding is a big issue, and this has been highlighted uh, in, in both countries. Uh, Given the, the, you know, the, as Gronya said, given the magnitude of the, the, the cyclone, especially the people affected in Mozambique, uh, in comparison to Philippines and all those other emergencies, the, what we are receiving is really so little. So my question would be, has this got to do more with our ability to advocate and to showcase what the nutrition issues are within the, rather within the ACT, or is it just that, uh, you know, uh, uh, overall we have not been uh, good enough in advocating, you know, at global level uh, for support in country? Um, and moving forward, uh, I know we have a few uh, donors on, 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 online. I, I, I saw, I think, the, you know, somebody from OFDA and a few others. So uh, all we can do is to uh, you know, like for Mozambique, you, you have that um, the bulletin which can be shared widely and in the bulletin, the funding gap has been, uh, you know, clearly articulated. Uh, but uh, for Zimbabwe, uh, in uh, other than the presentation that was shared 
what is there? Do you have other documentation which you could help us uh, to, to really kind of uh, share and make some outreach to see what, what could happen after that? Of course, this call is also basically organized to ensure that the partners are aware of the funding gap and those who are present in country uh, and those who do not have could also help in, in, in the advocacy effort. Um, and then the, the, the final bit I would like to also uh, comment on is on the, uh, the, the, the coordination, the structure. Uh, for Mozambique, uh, it, it, it's good, well, uh, there are pros and cons in terms of merging health and nutrition and subnational level. Uh, what would really be important is if we have a, a UNICEF colleague or somebody who is double hurting, they just need to have sub, uh, you know, a working group that can discuss at that level nutrition issues and focus some of the nutrition related discussions because we all know that when the discussion happens under health, you know, nutrition will be a little topic, the last agenda point, and then nothing happens. So. Uh, again, to Abby and uh, uh, whether there is that discussion, that emphasis to ensure that at least at subnational level there is a dedicated discussion on nutrition. Uh, I also uh, appreciate the structure that uh, uh, Simon um, explained uh, for Zimbabwe, where at all levels there is clarity around the coordination structure and who is leading on it. And I think we would also really benefit from having a similar uh, discussion and a structure for, for Mozambique, which in my view is more the epicenter of the, the, the cyclone response. Uh, with that, um, I, I think uh, the, the key as uh, very clear for both countries, uh, for um, Malawi, uh, sorry, Mozambique, it was more the resource mobilization, which is in, in both cases, and then uh, uh, the additional capacity support, and then advocacy around uh, uh, IYCFE. Uh, again, for the IYCFE, I know the, the, uh, the, the countries might have issued uh, a joint statement or anything like that, but if there's something, if you know the sources, and a few of the stores of the BMS uh, from international level, then we can also make some outreaches through the IFE core group to ensure that, you know, we, we kind of address it at that level. But if it is more at country level, uh, the, the donors, that is, then uh, the, the, the strategy in terms of advocating has to really focus at country level. So again, on that one, Simon, uh, I don't know whether there's any apart from the, 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 you know, the, the monitoring that you are doing and the effective way of confiscating and taking you know, the, 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 the products, is there something else which can, can happen at country level? And what exactly do you expect uh, the global colleagues to do? Because if the source is regional or country level, uh, that approach needs to, you know, the, the advocacy needs to target the country uh, donors. Uh, with that, I would um, stop there. Uh, what we would do is uh, we have already somehow gone over time. Uh, we would share the, this short presentation which the colleagues have, have, have made for the three countries. Uh, for Mozambique, we have, for both Mozambique and uh, Malawi, we actually have a very elaborate, detailed presentation which uh, would really be a good uh, uh, a background for many of you who are present on the ground or the donors who like to get much more. We would also attach that in our communication. Uh, and then uh, uh, Mozambique also had the, had the bulletin which uh, uh, Abby talked about and, and we would share that as well. Uh, other than that, uh, some of the key asks, uh, are clear and, and, and I guess we will try to take action at individual country level, but uh, for the global partners, you know, there's, if there's any particular outreach, let's say, or for um, take support, 
uh, it would come through to us and we'll try to liaise with Andy and the group on that. Uh, the other additional uh, request around training of partners on the cluster approach, uh, country level, class, uh, sub-national level coordination uh, training, uh, that will take up directly and uh, Angeline will be reaching out uh, and Anna will be reaching out to you, to the, the countries to look at the best way to support you in that. Uh, so we did that. Uh, um, I would like to end there, but first to see whether there's any additional um, questions or so online before we, 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 we all hung up. Anything online? Additional comments? Okay, yeah, so uh, Abigail and uh, Simon, thanks so much for uh, preparing this presentation and uh, Dorothy also for the support uh, the, you know that she has been providing uh, the leadership she has been providing to the an entire uh, response in terms of the overall coordination, and uh, we would uh, be in touch with you on those key specific as the ones which are uh, related to the GNCT, uh, where we think we we can take action. We'll be reaching out to you through the help desk for the partner specific uh, issues. Uh, we would also be, we know where to, to reach out to. Uh, however, on the resource mobilization, I think this is something that I would expect each and every partner who is on this call uh, also has the responsibility for individual partner level outreach so that, you know, you, 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 you are the advocates in your respective capacity within your own organizations to really highlight uh, the, the, the fact that um, uh, given the you know the, the magnitude of the, the emergency, the funding is, is really so low, and, uh, and 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 whether you know in your organisations also you could advocate more. And I think it was Simon or Abby mentioned that uh, uh, the, we are not very clear in terms of partner requirement, but also I, I think in the funding status that you might have presented. I'm not sure uh, whether you were able to adequately um, uh, capture the, the funding that comes through the, uh, the other NGOs other than the UN agencies. And maybe that is something that you also need to do to ensure that uh, the, the, the funding situation that you are presenting um, uh, uh, represents truly the collective, not just uh, what came through the two UN agencies. And, and the stuff that you talked about. Uh, with that, I would say thank you so much and have a, a great uh, afternoon, evening, those in the US, uh, the, I guess it's still morning. So uh, thank you so much and bye bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay.